Hey guys, welcome back, and today we're going to be doing a bit of a shorter video, but one that I think a lot of people may have fun with. It's going to be a mod installation guide for the Long Dark. We'll be going over how to set up your mod loader, where to find and download mods, how to install them, and then I'll go over some of my favorite mods as well. Before we hop into it though, you guys should know that there is unfortunately no way that I know of to mod the Long Dark on consoles or Mac, so people that play on those mediums won't be able to install mods, sadly. Alright, with that said, let's get right into it. If you've done any modding of games before, you may know of a couple popular mod loaders like Vortex or Thunderstore. These mod managers make installing and managing mods very easy to understand, but we won't get that luxury today. The Long Dark isn't a game that can be modded with these mod managers, so instead we're going to be using Melon Loader. Even though Melon Loader isn't as straightforward as more popular mod managers, it is still very easy to use and straightforward, so don't worry at all about not being smart enough to mod or anything like that. Click on the Melon Loader link in the description to be brought to Melon Loader's download page. Find the correct download for your OS, either Windows or Linux, and click Download. This will download the installer to your computer. Find that .exe file and open it. A window will open up and load for a moment before another pops up asking what game you want to manage. Scroll down until you find the long dark and click on it. There's a couple things that you can look at here before finishing the installation. You have the Melon Loader version, a little box down here that says Enable Nightly Builds, and you have the file path. Melon Loader will automatically set the file path to your Long Dark folder, so you shouldn't need to worry about that. The Melon Loader version will also already be set to the most recent version automatically. As for the Enable Nightly Builds checkmark, we can leave it unchecked because we won't be needing that. After that, you can hit Install, and you're all good to go. If you want to double check, all you have to do is go to your The Long Dark folder and find the Melon Loader directory. If you can see this folder, that means that Melon Loader was successfully installed. If you don't know how to find your The Long Dark folder, then all you need to do is open Steam, find The Long Dark in your games list, right click on it, go to Manage, and then select Browse Local Files, and then it will open right up to your The Long Dark folder. Once you have verified that Melon Loader was successfully installed, then you're all set and can begin looking at some mods. To find the mods, you simply have to go to tldmods.com, which I will have linked down in the description. Once you get there, you will have a whole catalog of mods to browse through. But before you start going all trigger happy, clicking install on every single mod that you see, there are a couple things that you'll want to pay attention to for mods that you're looking to install. First of all, look at the top right of the mod's thumbnail. If you see a giant red not working, then you probably shouldn't install that mod. If you see a green working, then you're all set. You may also see a yellow tag there that says with issues. This means exactly what it says, so the mod works and you can download it, but you may experience some bugs or issues while playing. Another thing to look at in this area is the occasional yellow beta tag. This simply means that the mod is in an early access release stage, and will likely experience changes and further updates as the team behind the mod continues to work on it. When installing a beta mod, expect that some things may seem unfinished or unpolished, because they are, but if the team sticks with the mod project, then improvements will come. The other tag you'll see will simply say either mod, plugin, or library. You'll most likely only be downloading things with the mod tag, as the plugin slash library tag mods are typically installed as requirements for other mods. Speaking of requirements, let's change our attention to the bottom of these mods now. There are four things that you might see down here, but they don't all always show up on every mod. These things are this green Show Support button, a Dependencies tab, a Download button, and a Details button. The green one is very simple. Clicking this button will bring you to a page where you can support the team or individual behind the mod, usually through the form of donations. The next one, the Dependencies tab, is very important, and you should always look at it before you hit Download on a mod. When you click on the tab, a couple buttons will pop up below it. These are the mods that are required to make the mod you want to install function. For example, if I wanted to download this mod, Affliction Component, I first have to make sure that I have Complex Logger and Mod Data installed as well. Without those two installed, the Affliction Component mod may not function properly, if at all. Clicking on these buttons will immediately download the mod file, so downloading dependencies is as simple as just a couple clicks. Once you have all the dependencies downloaded, you can hit the download button on the mod that you actually want to get. This will usually install the mod file in a similar fashion to when you press the dependencies buttons but occasionally it might take you to a different way of downloading, such as a GitHub repository. If that does happen, just find the files that you actually need for the mod. For example, with the Affliction Component mod, you only need to click on the DLL file. 
The last button is the details button, which simply pops up a little description of the mod, some version information, the author, and other details. The final thing to mention here is that when you install mods, your computer might flag the download as unsafe and halt the download. If it does this, just go to your browser's download history, click on the file, and hit download unverified file. I'm doing this on Chrome, so it may look a little bit different for other internet browsers, but if that is the case, just look up how to download files that are flagged as unsafe for your specific browser. Once you've downloaded all of the mods that you want and their dependencies, you'll want to open up folders with your file explorer. The first folder you want to open is going to be your The Long Dark folder, the same one that you installed Melon Loader 2. Once you have that open, look for the Mods directory. If you don't see one, all you have to do is create a new folder and name it Mods, capitalized just to be safe. Then open up that Mods folder. Now, in your other File Explorer window, find the location that you downloaded the mods to. For me, it's just my Downloads folder. Now you just want to move all of the mods that you downloaded into your Mods folder. And boom! You've now got your mods installed. Well, almost. Before you launch your new modded game, check the files one last time. The mod files will mostly be DLL or JSON files. But what you are checking for is any ZIP files. If a mod is a zip file, then you'll need to make sure that you extract it to finish installation. To do this, select the file and then right click on it and select extract all. Then make sure that the file path that it's being extracted to is your mods folder. Once you've double checked that your file path is correct, you can hit the extract button and then wait for it to finish. Once it's done, check to see if the new mod files are now in your mods folder. If they are, then you can delete the zip file and launch your game. Now when you launch the game, you'll notice something a little bit different. A console's gonna pop up instead of the game, and a crap ton of commands are just gonna rush right across your screen. Don't worry though, this is just Melon Loader booting up the mods. Just watch the pretty words go by and keep an eye out for any red text. You'll see a good bit of yellow text, but that stuff's normal. What you're looking for is the red text, because red text means that something went wrong. If you see red text, then scroll up to find the message and read what went wrong. There are a lot of things that could happen here, so try to look up whatever errors you get and find a solution. If you're having issues, then leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to try and help you fix it. If everything goes well, then the console will finish running its commands and a long dark will launch, ready to play with your brand new mods. Now you guys are all set to start playing, so you can go ahead and play if you want to. But, if you want to hear about some of my favorite mods, then stick around just a little bit longer. My personal mod preference is mods that add to the game without giving any advantage or detracting from the essence of the game, if that makes sense. I especially love mods that help add to the aesthetics when it comes to safe house customization, because I love the survival system so much already that I really wouldn't touch it very much. For example, one mod that I love is the Placing Anywhere mod. This mod removes a lot of the restrictions on where you can place items in the world around you, it lets you place cans much closer to each other, finally adjust the angle of items you want to place, stack items, and much more. Now, there are a couple of ways that this mod could be exploited, such as using it to bypass obstacles, or since the placement applies to placing campfires, you could create fires in otherwise invalid locations. What I do, and you can do as well, is to be sure to not use these exploits. For example, I always make sure that if I'm on a ledge or a location that I feel wouldn't be a valid spot to create a fire normally, I move to a place that I'm confident would be valid. Another mod that I love is the Safehouse Customization Plus mod, which allows you to activate Safehouse Customization anywhere, including outdoors, as well as pick up and move things that you aren't normally able to, like fire barrels, stoves, even these little candy machines, much to Francois's chagrin. Now, this mod is much easier to exploit. You could create bridges or ramps to bypass a lot of terrain that you don't like, move a bunch of six-slot stoves to your base, and so on. This mod is especially exploitable when combined with Placing Anywhere. To make this mod a balanced one that doesn't negatively impact the game, I never move stoves out of the location that they're found inside of, and I don't use the outside customization to do anything other than exterior decoration of safe houses, with the exception of making a bridge to the Bleak Inlet Cannery, but that's only something I do after I've already reached it normally first. I just hate having to do that long, whiny parkour path every time I want to use the cannery. Hinterland, please just add a plank that we can move to make a bridge over that once we've made it there. Just make that part of the vanilla game, I beg you. The final mod that I want to give some love here is the Candlelight mod. This mod adds the ability to create candles and some other materials that are used to make candles. This mod is super simple. You get animal fat or tallow, a wick, and combine them to make a candle. 
You can set the duration of candles in the mod settings, and light them with any torch or match. This mod is super fun for improving the aesthetics of your environment, as not much can be the cozy feel that the candlelight brings. Now, this mod is one that provides an advantage to the player, as it provides a lot of light without having to sacrifice a lot of firewood or lamp oil. One way to counter this is to just make sure that you aren't using the candlelight to work on things at night. If you do want to work on something at night, then just make sure that you turn on a lantern as well so that you can keep things fair. Now, despite the fact that I talked about how to keep all these mods from changing game balance, the most important thing to note about mods is that they don't have to be balanced. When you mod the game, you're modifying it to your liking and style. I like to mod without impacting game balance too heavily or changing the feel of the game, but if you want to mod to create staircases, build walls out of crates, whatever you want, then just do it. Gaming is about having fun at the end of the day, so mod to whatever extent you want to. Just don't try and claim that you haven't made it easier for yourself when you download a minigun mod. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you all enjoyed the video and you were able to get your mods up and going. If you're experiencing any issues, then leave a comment and I'll do my best to help you out. If you liked the video, then please leave a like to help out the channel. If you want to see more from me, then grab the nearest fish and slap that subscribe button. You're all amazing, and I will see you in the next one.